What's up? This is Justin with Lesser Dog Tutorials, and this is episode four in our Elden Ring Souls-like um, tutorial series for Unreal Engine 5. In this video, we're just going to do a jump ability. Pretty simple, not too much associated with it, but let's get that character um, able to jump. And we'll get started by going into the Blueprints folder, and then we're going to create a new folder in here called Abilities. And we might as well create another uh, folder here for this equipment. So we'll just say equipment. Then we can drag these three right in there. And then in the abilities folder, we're just going to create a blueprint class. And if you, if you hit this drop down, we're going to search for gameplay ability. And then you can see it right here. So we'll just create that. And we'll call this GA underscore. Oh, okay. It's just going to stop it. Underscore jump. There we go. So now we have this um, gameplay ability. We can open it up real quick. And you'll see there's just event activate ability and event on end ability. But before we mess around in here, since we created this ability, let's go over to the character the third person character blueprint and we're going to add this jump ability to the default abilities so over on the right side we see right at the top there's abilities and then there's default abilities zero array elements so we're going to add one and we're going to select a jump so now we have the ability on the player and then while we're here in this jump section I want to expand this down a bit and move this down then I'm going to bring this jump section down so that I can add a custom event and we're going to call this on landed and basically what this is going to do is tell us when the character has landed so that we can continue to be able to use abilities because when we're in the air, we're going to stop ourselves from using abilities, and then this will reset it. So with onLanded created, I want to create another custom event. And I'm going to call this one is falling. And that way, this will run, is falling will run whenever the character is falling. On landed will run when the character lands. And then we can swap back and forth to tell the game whether or not the character's in the air so that we know what abilities the player can do and what abilities are blocked. So in order to know when the character is falling, we can head over to the animation blueprint of the character and we can actually define that from here. So down here, and this is in the event graph, we, we have this section here that says set is falling from the movement components falling state. Well, right after this, we can just branch out from here and then if it is true, then we can take the reference of the character, which is right here. And we can cast to the third person character blueprint. And then we'll just run is falling. So now we're running is falling when the character is airborne. So that's good. The next one is on landed. We need to figure out when the character lands, how do we run this custom event? So what we want to do first is over in the Blueprints Abilities folder where we have the gameplay ability jump, let's create a new Blueprint class and we're going to search for Anim Notify. And right here at the top we can just select that and we'll do AN underscore on landed. And if you open that up, there's nothing here but there's three functions that we can override. And we want to we want to override the received notify. And so if you drag out from mesh comp, we can get the actor. Or sorry, we'll get the owner. And then from the owner, we can cast to the third person. And then from here, we just do on landed. So now we know that the Oh, and also check return value to true. 
So now we know that this on or on landed anim notify will actually run on landed. We need to figure out how to run this anim notify. Well, an anim notify is ran from an animation. So if you go to content characters mannequins animations manny, you'll see that there is the mm underscore land animation sequence. This is what runs when the character lands on the ground. So this would be a perfect spot to run the anim notify that says that we landed. So there's a track here called notifies with a dropdown, and under it is a one, a track called one. So around maybe the two second, or I guess the two frame, three frame mark, we can just add a notify, and we're gonna find our an underscore on landed. Now it's gonna run this function, or this anim notify, which runs the on landed function, at that moment. So back in the third person character blueprint, we know that on land it is going to run when we land, is falling is going to run whenever we're in the air. So that's great. We can actually test this out if we want. And we'll say is falling. And then this one will be print string landed. Now jumping should not work yet, but we can still run off of an edge and see if that works. So right now, there's nothing popping up. So I'll run off the edge here. Is falling, landed. I'm no longer falling and I have landed. Try it again. Yes, so it's working well, and that's exactly what we want. Next, let's head over to the gameplay ability for jump, and all we need is the event activate ability. And in the class defaults, we're going to select this ability tag section, and we're just going to add a new ability tag, and we're going to call it player.action.jump. So now that is the tag that we'll use to fire this ability. So let's head back over to third person character, and up here in the jump section, we're going to delete is grounded and delete this print string. And we're going to use a node called try activate ability or try activate abilities by tag. And on started, that's what will fire this function. And for the gameplay tag container, we need to promote it to a variable, and we'll call this the jump tag container. And if you compile, we can set the default value of the jump tag container to be player action jump. Back over in the gameplay ability for jump, the first thing we want to do is get actor info. And that's going to get the info, info from the actor that is performing this actual ability. Then from that, we can break this because we want the owner actor, which we can cast to third person character. Great, so now we have our third person character. And what we want to do is first run the jump command and this jump function here is a part of the character itself so that this will allow the character to jump just like it does in the default third person character project and then we want to do a function called commit ability which commits this ability and fires off anything it needs to fire off next we want to apply a gameplay effect to owner. So if we do apply gameplay effect to owner, this is where we can determine that we want to add a gameplay effect that tells us that the player is in the air. So let's go ahead and create two gameplay effects that will dictate whether or not the character is in the air or on the ground. So if we do a blueprint class and we search for gameplay effect, We'll just create one and we'll call it GE underscore is airborne. And then we can duplicate this and call this GE underscore is grounded. And all we're going to do with these gameplay effects is apply a gameplay tag to the player. So in is airborne, you want to switch this duration policy to infinite because you're infinitely going to be airborne until you land. And then down here in the added granted tag section in the added section, we want to add a new gameplay tag that we're going to call player.isAirborne. 
And that's all we want to do for this. And the other one is the same thing is grounded. We want it to be infinite. And then the added tag is a new player tag. So player dot is grounded. With that um, prepared, we can go back over to the gameplay ability for jump. And we're going to apply, since this is jump and we're jumping into the air, we're going to apply the gameplay effect for is airborne. And then right after this, we want to remove gameplay effect from owner with granted tags. So now it's going to look for a gameplay effect that grants a specific tag, in our case, grounded. And we're going to remove that, that effect. So if is grounded is on the player and we jump, we're going to give the character the gameplay effect is airborne. And we're going to remove the gameplay effect that grants the tag player dot is grounded. And that's the gameplay effect is grounded. So now that that has been done, it applies this effect, it removes this effect, we can end the ability. The ability has now been completed. And the other thing we want to do in the class default is say that the activation blocked tag, meaning this ability is blocked, if the activating actor or component has any of these tags, we want to block this um, ability from firing if we're airborne. So if the player has the tag player dot is airborne, then this won't run. We, we don't want this to run. There's no reason to. So with that done, head back over to the third person character. And we're going to um, just kind of mess with these for a bit. And then it should be working. So we're going we're gonna to need a little more room. So let's just work on over here for now. So we can remove these print strings. And is falling, since it runs every frame that we're in the air, all we want to do is run a do once node so that this happens once. And the only time it's reset is when we land. However, before we reset it, we kind of just want to do two things. The same thing we did in the gameplay ability for jump. We want to apply gameplay effect to self. And the effect we're adding or applying is grounded. And then we want to remove gameplay effect with granted tags. Same thing as before. And we don't need to redo this ability system component. We can just reuse this one over here. And this one is, since we're doing grounded, we're applying grounded, we're removing is airborne. And that will then reset this do once node. And then the do once node for is falling right after it, we're wanting to do the inverse. So we're applying is airborne and we're not doing is airborne, we're doing is grounded. So with these done, we can check to see if this is doing what we want it to do. So if you hit play and then down at the bottom, we can do show debug space ability system. We can check our tags that are owned. So right now we have nothing. So we should probably add is grounded off of our event begin play. But for now, let's jump. And you can see it is airborne when the character is in the air. And when they land, it is grounded. And it should still work when we're falling also. Is airborne, is grounded. Is airborne, is grounded. So now we have a good baseline. And let's go ahead and add on event begin play. We're just going to add this section here. So we're grounded and removing any abilities that say is airborne. And we'll do that right before we add the equipment. So I'll just copy and paste it here. Move this stuff over. So now we are applying is grounded right at the beginning and removing this. Um, before I move on and test this out again, I'm going to rename add equipment to attach equipment. It just makes more sense. So after finishing this tutorial, 
And be right before I, I started to export this, I realized that in the gameplay ability for jump, we don't need to apply a gameplay effect or remove a gameplay effect. That's already done on the third person character where if we're in the air, we apply this effect and remove this effect. And if we land, we apply this effect and remove this one. So just by jumping, using this jump function, we'll already be airborne and the functions on third person character will already fire. So we can, we can just remove these so that right after we commit the ability, we can end it. So if we just test this out before we start moving around, I want to do show debug ability system. And you'll see that it is grounded. The player's grounded, and that's good. If you jump, it's airborne, grounded again, airborne, grounded. So everything's working well. Before it was stacking is airborne twice because the jump was doing it and then also the character being in the air. But that, that really doesn't matter that much. But there's no point in doing it twice. It's just redundant. So the cleaner code, the better. So that's going to do it for the jump tutorial. Um, we're going to get into some more abilities such as rolling and attacks and things like that in future videos. So if you like this video, please hit like, please subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.